Tape identification. This is an interview with Sri Mataji Nimala Devi on the 12th of May 1987. Interview begins five seconds from now. Sri Mataji, we've been told that there were 3,000 people at your programs in Sydney and that hundreds rushed forward after the program to speak to you and to shake you by the hand. This is a very unusual thing in Australia. Why do you think this happened? Uh, I think uh, there were not 3,000, maybe less, because the hall didn't contain so many people, but there were quite a lot, about 2,000. And they did rush to thank me, and they were, uh, their eyes were glistening with light, and their face were looking very enlightened and happy, joyous because this is the greatest thing that can happen to human beings. In many ages it happens, the rebirth of a person, and they felt the rebirth within themselves, the peace within themselves and the cool breeze coming out of their own heads, and all that convinced them, and that's why they just came to thank Me, out of gratitude, I think. With due respect, Srimataji, the world is full of people promising the millennium. And one by one, they're becoming exposed as charlatans and tricksters. How can we know when we're being deluded? I've been telling from 1981. In Australia, I visited four times before, every year openly telling people that beware of false people. The first thing to know that you cannot pay for your Self-Realization, nor you can have any course of it. You cannot do anything about it, it is effortless. How can you pay for anything that is a living process? This is a simple thing which people didn't like that time because they were following some guru or some falsehood. And some of those people who are to now exposed came to even a hit Me with Bible and things like that in the hall, because I was saying that you can't take money. But that's not the only thing. The person who talks about God should be able to give you the inner knowledge about your roots. I shouldn't just give you few, few words or mantras or things like that. It, he must tell you why he is doing it. What is the purpose of his uh, telling you of some mantras or of some sort of a prayer? If somebody claims something, then he must prove it. Now the first thing that should take place in the modern times is a Realization that is being promised, that at this time Self-Realization will take place. And that's what should happen. Unless and until that happens to you, which is also indicated in other scriptures, that your hands will speak. In Sahaja Yoga, your hands start speaking, they start indicating what's the problem with you, what's the problem of others. And they also, not only that, but you can get yourself cured, you can get other, other people cured. Beyond that, you have your peace, your joy, and so many things after that you feel that you are transformed. Unless and until these things happen to you, why should you believe people who claim that I am this and I am that? See, I just don't understand. What you're saying sounds almost evolutionary. It sounds almost as though we are on the threshold of some new step yes, in our Yes, of course, that's the reason it's. Today, that's the reason that a great evolution, the Amas evolution has to take place. You have to break through into a new dimension of your awareness, which I we call as thoughtless awareness, as Jung has described very clearly. But beyond that is collective consciousness, that is, you become conscious of others and yourself in the whole, like a macrocosm becoming conscious of microcosm. All these things, these people don't even talk, leave alone doing anything about it. 
but still people run to them because they think that they can purchase them, they can pay for it, and this ego keeps them satisfied. So the human being is not as complete as we like to think so. Are there more stages yet to come? Of course, he's not complete. He has to reach the state which is absolute, where the truth is one, where your nervous system should tell whether it is true or not. When you get your Self-realization, from your hands you start feeling a cool breeze flowing, you feel it all around you. Supposing something is wrong, something is uh, evil, then immediately you know on your hands that it is hot, it is burning, it's evil. Or something is wrong on different centers, then a different, the same finger which denotes that particular area will start burning or indicating that there's something wrong with that person. This sounds rather like a, a description of something that happens in this day and age where people talk about something having good vibes or bad vibes. Is, is this a, a kind of vibratory awareness? When I went to America first time, uh, in 73, I talked to them about vibrations and told them there are good and bad. And there was a gentleman who had organized my program and he said, you must get uh, everything, uh, what do you say to that? Uh, absolutely uh, certified, what, what do you say to that in your... Uh, I, I, I'm not quite sure. Ma. You see, like uh, you get a certificate from the government that this is what. Oh, you're um, yes, certified is certified. Is, like has that. to be corrected. So yeah. that this is your own words and your own things. <laughs> I laughed at him. I said, "You see, this is not to be certified. What's the need? Let people use these words. Ultimately, they come to the right thing, because just by talking about it, it's not going to be. Con it's not going to convince anyone. So." It has to be felt, it has to happen, the experience has to be there. They have to actually feel the bad and the good clearly and that is only possible through Sahaja Yoga. I do not want to uh, appropriate everything to myself, but I know nobody else can do it. So if they can do it, it's very good for me. So, so when a person practices the Sahaja Yoga, they actually feel these things? They actually feel everything. They actually feel on central nervous system, which is the sign that he has evolved, because whenever there is evolution, you feel it on your central nervous system. So, are you telling me that a day will come when we can actually tell whether a person is lying or being insincere? Of course, of course, that is nothing. You can even tell if a person has got cancer or he's got liver trouble or he has got heart trouble. Also you can tell if he's mentally all right or not. Also you can tell if he has been to a wrong guru or he had some spiritual problems from a wrong guru. You can immediately tell. And all this comes from this Self-realization? Yes, of course. I mean, then you become aware of things which you were not aware of before getting Self-realization.